B-A-M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere Get ready for a chat with a chair I'm Joe Atling, Chair of the Vigo County Democratic Party. Welcome! To the award-winning chat with the chair. We're delighted you could join us. Hope everybody's staying safe out there, warm and healthy. We are in the midst of uh, Black History Month and we appreciate uh, you joining us. We've got a tremendous show tonight. We've got a tremendous guest. Can't wait to get started, so let's not waste any more time. Get right into our first guest. Tell our viewers who you are. My name is Don Turner. I'm a former New York County school teacher. And I taught for 34 years, and now I'm retired, and I'm doing this small project. Mr. Turner, we're so glad you could join us uh, for this chat with the chair, your first time with the chat. Uh, I know we're going to get into your background with the art teaching, but uh, what do you think about the blazer I'm wearing tonight? I think it's pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably is the most succinct uh, description I've had of my blazer, so <laughs> I, I think you're right on. But... Uh, Talk to our viewers about your background. You're a lifelong resident of Eagle County, aren't you? I uh, graduated from Garfield High School back in the mid-50s. Home of the? Home of the Purple Eagles. The Purple Eagles. Yep, and uh, we had an undefeated, untied football team. And you were quite an accomplished athlete, multi-sport athlete at Garfield. I ran track, played basketball, and uh, football. I was an all-state football player. What, what position were you in football? Right in. There you go. Of those sports, what was your favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball. Of course, being from Indiana, and you, you played with some, uh, in, in addition to your own accolades as a player, you played with some great players at, at Garfield as well. I played with Charlie Curtin, uh, Jim Wall. I can't remember all of them. Most of them are about gone now, but... Some really good teams back in the we day. Had some great, we had a great team. We were undefeated and untied. Who was the coach of that team? Darvel Maddox. And uh, with regard to uh, some of the things that you learned as a young uh, athlete at that time, what would you say one of the most important things you learned from coaches of that era? Uh, well, we learned that what we had to do was really finish what we started. And... Uh, we uh, were taught to live healthy lives, and you know we didn't participate in any drinking and drugs or anything like that. And we felt that if we stayed healthy and played uh, sports, that we would uh, be better men. And you recall what the climate was like at that time regarding race relations at Garfield and throughout Vigo County. What, what was your memory of that as a young man? As a young man, I didn't think about it much at all because at Garfield, you know, everybody seemed to be, uh, you know, uh, dedicated to the school and making sure that it was uh, well respected. Of course, uh, you, again, were an accomplished athlete, to say the least, as a high school uh, athlete, but you were also a tremendous student. What do you attribute your success in the classroom to be? Well, I wasn't as successful in the classroom then as I was uh, later on in life when I went to college, but uh, I wasn't uh, all that great a student. But the main reason I was in school was to play sports. So talk about your upbringing then and what drove you to be uh, such an accomplished, again, student athlete as it was, as you, particularly as you progressed on through college? Uh, in college, I found out that um, some of the uh, areas of uh, academics uh, study uh, required a lot more time and effort. So uh, I think the first day I got in English, I was overjoyed because I had to take it over. You know, I had to take a remedial course in English. But when I got my first day, I was so happy. 
And where'd you and attend college? From then on, I tried to keep them up. Where'd you attend college? I graduated from Indiana State with a master, uh, bachelor's degree and a uh, master's degree. And, and a sixth year beyond that. And was that, uh, at that time, was that Indiana State Teachers College at that time? No, it was Indiana State University, but it wasn't uh, long or uh, far away from the Teachers College, but it wasn't any, no, no, any longer learning uh, college at Teachers College. Of course, Indiana State has a long track record of producing teachers, uh, very accomplished well thought of teachers throughout the country and particularly here in Terre Haute and Vigo County. Was there something that while you were attending Indiana State that drove you to education? Uh, no, I was an athlete, a, a sports figure, but I had always planned to do better and uh, go to college because I thought without doing that I wouldn't have been successful. And I was the first one to graduate from college in my family. But uh, my, my older brother started, but he didn't finish. I'm sure that was a source of pride for your parents. Oh, yeah. That had to be a big, big deal in your family to be the first one to graduate then. Yeah. Would you say that there was anybody that was a particular mentor or role model to you to get you into teaching as a profession? I can't think of any single person, but back then, you know, everybody wanted to know during the summer where you're going back in the fall, but uh, I had always planned to go back, but I didn't uh, go straight through, and I left high school. I went to Butler University for a, a year, and uh, I ran track up there, and I I started out playing football, but I didn't survive their football program. It was, it was too tough. But I didn't uh, stay at Butler. I came back and went to Indiana State and finished there. And what was your degree in at Indiana State? Art education. So was there something that drew your interest to art education? That does seem to be a very specific major, and, and then as in given your distinguished career as a teacher in art, uh, was that something that you determined that you had a specific talent in or just a, an overall well, interest? Uh, when I was a little boy, my mom used to rave about my art and encouraged me to continue to draw and compete with my older brother. And uh, But I knew from the time I first started in school that I had some art ability. So uh, when it came to deciding what kind of courses to take in college, once I got the general education out of the way, then I major, started to major in art. So you determined at a young age that you, you were gifted and talented with regard to your art skills, is that Yes, fair? I was, I was uh, aware of my art skills, but I didn't know how tough it was going to be, and I didn't know what it would take to become art, or what part of art I was going to be involved with. I found out that uh, art education was probably a good option. Uh, so that is a real thing, having that innate ability to have some art talent. Do you agree with that? Yes. You know, my father, as you know, was a long time uh, art educator himself and a very talented artist. And he, he had 10 children and would be the quick wow. to tell you that uh, <laughs> I think there's only one of the 10 that had any art talent. But it was uh, clear that I did not have any as much as uh, we tried to and tried to, to draw, whether it was with watercolors or pencils or you name it, uh, it just wasn't something that I seemed to have any talent whatsoever. And and uh, uh, he certainly pointed that out. But uh, I love him and miss him to this day. But uh, would you say that there was a particular area of art that you had a more specialty with than another? Well, I enjoyed figure drawing, so. I eventually got a job at the meat store downtown. Okay. And uh, I did all the fashion art for the uh, newspaper, or for the store that appeared in the newspaper. And uh, that was really an uh, exciting thing for me to do. And I did that, you know, back in the 60s. And I was really uh, excited about that. So those would be the pencil drawings or? 
markers, or how would you do that? Well, they started out as pencil drawing, but they were more like ink, ink drawings. Okay. And I uh, drew the fashions from uh, clothing, you know, in, in the store. I used to hang them up and then sketch them. Is people, that right? Yeah, in them. And they appear in the newspaper, and I was always excited to see how they turn out. That's neat. So that was that was back in the day then, uh, the Mies store located down on Wabash Avenue in downtown Terre Haute? Yes. So how long did you uh, have that position? Uh, I worked there until I got out of college. I okay. went to college while I was uh, uh, working, in it. and they they paid my way some of the tuition to uh, get me through college. But once I got through college, they wanted me to work for the uh, Brown Shoe Company. Okay. And they sent me to uh, St. Louis. I went over there to see what they were doing, but I wasn't really good enough, I don't think, to get a job in fashion and illustration. Um, um, working full time as a uh, uh, illustrator in the um, fashion industry, so I did take a portfolio and I went to Chicago. And I was advised that I probably needed more training. So I came back home and I um, started working in the uh, fashion uh, display department. You know, the dressing of the mannequins in the windows and mm -hmm. making uh, uh, um, I don't know put it, dressing the windows and. Uh, while I was doing all that, I was going to school. So, so that was at that time. Of course, those what they the displays in the windows. That was a big deal. That's how people didn't have the catalogs necessarily and things. They they'd go. Oh, well, they would be in the window. Yeah. You could you could walk up to the window and see like a dress that you wanted or uh, clothes that you wanted. And you go inside and you'd buy them. And back at that time, those would change pretty regularly. Then, so people would. Oh yeah, we worked on windows every day. Is that right? Yeah. Times sure have changed, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> so when did you decide to go to the classroom and start uh, sharing your talents with uh, the students of Eagle County? Well, I went on, went through college, and I got when I got to senior year, I had to do, you know, student teaching and all that. And uh, we got our basic training in a lab school under uh, John Laska. And... Uh, started a career in teaching art. So talk about some of the schools in the, in the school corporation of Eagle County that you taught in. Yeah, I taught in uh, Sarah Scott. I started out in Sarah Scott and I taught mainly at North and South High School and I taught at Chauncey Rose for a year. You ever sat back and tried to calculate just how many students you've educated in Vigo County over the years? Quite a few. <laughs> I bet that's right. A lot of, uh, you probably educate a lot of, of uh, parents and their children and grandchildren, I imagine. Yeah, that makes me feel real young. <laughs> <laughs> so, was art, uh, art was a required class, was it not? No, it wasn't required. Art is an elective class that you can take if you want to, like art and music. And uh, it's always been a struggle for art and music to survive in the public schools. I was thinking maybe back at that time at the middle school or high, junior high level that might have been a required course like at Sarasota. Yeah, Scott. it could have been back okay. then, yeah. But then high school, like you said, it was a, an elective, so uh, you had to attract people, and you always had full classes. So what do you think about your class that attracted people to a subject maybe some people were trying to avoid? I don't know. A lot of kids took my class because... They didn't want to take a class they thought would have been a lot harder. <laughs> well, I imagine it had something to do with what you were teaching fun. them. I, I imagine that's true. So uh, any memorable students that you like to talk about over the years that you've had? You've got some talented people out there that are still uh, displaying their talents in, in uh, art exhibits and galleries as well as buildings throughout the community. You want to talk about some of those students that are your favorites? Well, I wouldn't want to just... Uh, talk about individual ones, but 
There have been a number of them went on to become artists, but very few. You know, out of the hundreds of kids that I've had, only maybe, I don't know, less than a hundred kids. Did you ever, anybody that you ever had over the years without necessarily singling anybody, anybody ever reminded them of yourself, and you, somebody that you had in class that you you saw yourself in them with regard to either their approach to things or the talent that they had, anybody like that that you had? Oh, some of them were a lot better than I was <laughs> when I grew up. But, uh, I'm amazed at how uh, talented some of them are. And some of them are now working for uh, comic club. Uh, book companies, and, uh, Becky Holder is a muralist. She's done murals all over town. That is an individual. That, <laughs> yeah, she's and, a young lady that's been in and uh, just fascinated to talk to. She's been in chat with the chair and mm -hmm. the things, some of the buildings that she's put her artwork on. It's it's unbelievable, and that's got to be a tough tough job to do that. Yeah, she's a talented uh, individual. Have you ever done anything like that yourself, uh, with the side of a building or a wall, an exterior wall like that? Is that anything ever you've done in your uh, career? Besides myself, there were three or four students, and uh, I went out to uh, Lost Creek Elementary. Uh -huh. We did the wall out there. Oh, did you? Yeah, we did a, a whole herd of elephants. That's been a few years ago. Yeah, it's probably still there, though. I think you're right. That's That was, what was the uh, impetus to do that? Was that your idea, or? Oh, no, somebody, the principal, somebody called and wanted us to do work. And the other people have done the same thing. But uh, we went out there for, I don't know how long it took us to paint all, but the life size. Yeah. Uh, a herd of elephants. That's that's quite a project to take under. I'll tell you, that's you were ahead of your time on doing that. That seems <laughs> to now be pretty prevalent that people do that. And and again, I think when we talk with her, it's just that the, the way that it helps people and and uh, just seems to bring joy to people to see that kind of artwork out in the open. It's it's really refreshing. When I was in elementary school, my teacher just loaned me out to different uh, uh, schools. Is that right? To help them make mules on their walls. Well, I know we back in the day, I would, we, when you used to have, uh, you put your, for going to first day of class when you'd have to maybe write your name on all your school supplies and things. Mm -hmm. And we'd always haul our kids over to my dad so he could <laughs> use a beautiful penmanship to write their names. And that was always, the kids were always so proud that their names were written so nicely. Uh, what anything I was doing, but but uh, his penmanship and all. So you still uh, utilize your skills in that regard. Well, I have a business called Turner Graphic Designs, and I do illustrations for and commission work for whoever wants it done. I haven't done much lately because of you know the COVID, but uh, I did one uh, picture last year, but I don't do as much as I used to. So where is your business? 2129 Spruce Street. Um, we've, uh, we've got a meeting coming up in the month. Do you think we might be able to pull some of your artwork out of your portfolio, display it? Uh, I don't know. Most of it, somebody is. We've got we have an it. exhibition at the public library. We're going to shoot that. Oh, we've got an exhibition at the public library? Yes, at the present time. For oh, Black, is that right? For Black History Month. Well, let's talk about that. What kind of exhibition is, is that right now? Uh, it's this uh, portraits of famous black uh, individuals, like Barack Obama, the first black president. And are, are, are those, is that a drawing that you've done? Yeah, there's one down there. Are all of the drawings are yours, or there's a variety? Yeah, there's six of them. Is that right? And that's at the Veal County Public Library? Yes. And, uh, I don't know the address, but it's right over on Walnut. It's right down 7th Street, 7th and Seventh Poplar and Walnut, and Walnut all yeah. those streets. So so I'm I'm hearing from my production team that we're going to get down there and get some, some visuals of your artwork down there. Well, it's like hanging, How about on, that? It's hanging on the wall. So uh, you've got six, six pieces there? Yeah. Well, do you remember what they all are? Besides Barack Obama? And Martin Luther King and Harriet Tubman and uh, Billie Holiday 
Uh, I mean, it's it. Those are pretty good ones, though. You you got some rock stars there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I had a list of them, but I had to I had to cut that down to six. So are these are these paints paint? Oil no, paint? they're drawings. Drawings. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So was was that just uh, when you when you draw those? Let's say uh, Barack Obama. So if you were drawing President Obama's, when you draw that uh, drawing, do you do you use a number of different photographs of him? Is well, I got a, a, a rogue file, and it has pictures of him when he was president. That's awesome. You know, and magazine covers and whatever. Well, we are also going to have to post those hours so that we can get people down there, and that's neat that that you're doing that. So, what uh, from your perspective? is the significance of, of having that kind of display in a public library during Black History Month? Well, we hit on that idea about, well, it's probably been, you know, six or seven years ago. I belonged to an art club called the River City Art Association, and uh, we uh, have volunteer artists for every uh, month of the year. And I chose February because of the black history. And so every uh, month the, the show changes. Like my show is up now from the 1st of February to the end of February. That's great. Then, then another artist will show their work in the same space. It's in the lobby of the Vigo County Public Library. Well, we're excited. Yeah. We're going to get down there ourselves and see it. And we're, we're excited to get our cameras down there to get your your work uh, to display it for our viewers. Um, you, of course, had a distinguished career as an educator, and you also have been a tremendous asset to this community, a variety of different community organizations. And you past president of the NAACP, is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Talk about some of your work there, some of the people that you worked with in that capacity. Well, it's been quite a while now. It's back in the 70s. I was president of the local chapter. And uh, we fought discrimination. I started out in the Housing Discrimination Committee. And uh, we were uh, involved in helping people secure uh, places to live that they were prohibited from living because they had certain mandates throughout the community where uh, black people couldn't uh, uh, buy or rent property. So we had to devise tactics to get those people homes to live in. That's how I got started. Is that right? And then I moved up to president later. So did you feel like you really made a difference? Well, I thought I did. I was talking about it with a fellow here earlier. And uh, it's just unbelievable how all those things have changed. You know, there's certain things that really haven't. Is that right? Yeah, you know, in the minds and hearts of people. But um, hopefully that'll change. Because what? we can very well tell other people in other countries how to run their country, and we, we still have problems here in the United States. That's for sure. So in, in many ways we've, we've gone forward, in other ways we've gone backwards. You think that's probably right? Could be, but I think things have changed quite a bit from the time I was a child to now. For the good or the bad? For the better. Okay. And to keep on that But path. I hadn't changed people's hearts and minds, and that's going to be up to them. But it's been, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that th some things are still happening that uh, happened way back when in the Jim Crow area that changed basically in the 50s. But... Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I. I see. You know, a lot of heartbreak and heartache, and a lot of violence, and a lot of. Uh, well. Well, that, we'll have to just wait and see, I guess. But you, when you say change people's hearts, that probably puts it as well as you can probably say it, don't you think? Yeah. But uh, it's hard to tell what's going to happen in the future. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever live to see a black 
a president of the United States, and look how awesome that is. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. That was awesome for certain. And uh, when uh, speaking of that, when uh, President Obama had an opportunity to come through and campaign in, in Terre Haute and Vigo County, did you get an opportunity to to go to any of those events? They had an event up at Terre Haute North. I you, met him at North. Is that right? Yeah, and shook hands with him. Yeah. That was an electric environment there, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it'll be something I'll never forget. Uh, that was unbelievable. That's when he was campaigning. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know that I've ever been in a political event it was quite like that. It was. Well, I've never met anybody that famous. Yeah, he was something else. So I met Joe Frazier once. Was that right? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Joe Frazier? I thought he was a man of steel. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I felt his bicep it was like steel. I met him on the elevator in Las Vegas. Yes. And uh, I could not believe it. Philadelphia guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. They were they were they were saying that that they they've got a uh, somebody was making light of the fact that Philadelphia's got a statue of a fictional by boxer in Rocky Balboa, and, and they had the. <laughs> Champ himself, Joe Frazier, and no statue of Joe Frazier. Knock uh, Ali down, flat on his backside. Those were some. Those were some legendary but fights, he, weren't they? You feel that bicep, you know that, you know it can knock anything out. Of course, you know it's always. He must have. You you saw him in person, of course, up up close and personal. But you know, on the you, elevator. When you saw him with <laughs> Ali, he seemed like a small guy, but obviously he was not. No, he was all muscle. Does he? I take it you didn't challenge him to a, a uh, fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we knew you were a smart guy. Now we know. So, so uh, it was thirty. How many years? Thirty-four years in the classroom before you retired. Thirty-five. Thirty-five years. And uh, what what was it that led you to just decide to finally retire? Well, I was way past time for me to retire. But I was going to go as long as they let me go. But, but I think they, they looked at the, the record book and said, wow, what's he still doing teaching? <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure made a lot of people a uh, great teacher over the years. But I enjoyed teaching, and I never felt like I was going to work when I had to go to school. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Of course, you had a, you, you, you have a, were blessed with three children. Want to talk about your family a little bit? Well, my son Jay, you know, played basketball. Yeah. Uh, was well, my grandson, uh, Jay uh, Turner, and Jeff Turner is his dad, and Adrian Turner and he's got three kid children. He has two girls and one boy. And uh, my youngest son is only 24, and he'll be 25 uh, in October. But yeah, so far he's he doesn't have any children. And they're all doing well. Your, yeah, your children doing. all doing well and still in the area. Mm-hmm. But none of how are they with their art talent? Any any talented artists in that group? No, uh, Adrian's two daughters were were into nursing, and uh, their son didn't particularly like college, but he's very talented. I mean, he could take your car and fix it, you know. All right. Yeah, he could, he could do body work on your car, but he's pretty smart. And um, my son is, my youngest son is a good artist, but he um, he's more into music than he is um, visual art. But he can play classical piano and he can play about six different instruments. Wow. And he can sing and record his music. It's impressive. Mm -hmm, but I don't know if he's going to do anything with it or not. Right now, he's having trouble trying to keep, you know, those uh, kids in line down there at uh, Jabal School for Boys. Working down there. Well, mm -hmm. That's well, that's great work he's doing then. Oh yeah, I mean, he's got a job and he's had it for quite a while, and I'm impressed. That's great. I'm glad. I'm glad he's. Working, making money. So you, you uh, of course, born in Terre Haute, and, and uh, 
had made Terrell your home for yourself and your family and your, your profession. So uh, how have you enjoyed Terrell and Vigo County? Well, I think everybody wants to leave Terrell Hope, but I think Terrell is a pretty good place to live. But I don't know. I think uh, with the population dwindling and not growing and uh, COVID and the business leaving, a lot of businesses leaving Terrell Hope, you know, I worry about how long we're going to survive if we don't get some industry in here. That's a well, good thought. Good thought. So we got to keep encouraging and, and keeping our, our young people in the community for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, as we are recognizing Black History Month uh, in the month of February, of course we're encouraging everybody, uh, among other things, to get out and see the exhibit at the public library. Any other thoughts for our viewers that you might have as we're reflecting and thinking about Black History Month? Uh, Black History Month, for the for most part, uh, was started by uh, uh, what is the name? Dr. Woodson, and the main thing was to recognize the contributions that black people had made to the United to America and the United States, and some of the uh, uh, important things that they've developed that we didn't know about because it's not in the history book would be things like a simple mailbox. You know, a black man created that idea for the where you stick your mail in the All mailboxes right. on the corner. And uh, there's a number of, uh, of uh, creations that they've actually made, but I can't have it. I, if you told me to, what I was going to be asked, I looked it up. Well, we asked some tough questions here on the chat, but, yeah. but you know, we want to commend you for your contributions uh, here in Vigo County for so many students that you've been such an important part of their lives and their education. Um, you've been a real role model for so many people, and uh, we want to acknowledge your contributions to our community. We appreciate all that you've done. Uh, we're delighted you could join us uh, and share some of your story with our viewers. And we hope that they can get out and see your exhibit at the public library. And we hope we can get you to maybe come out and, and share some of your talents with our uh, some of our meetings coming up. Any last words for our viewers? Any thoughts? Any any words of wisdom that you shared with your students over the years you want to share with our viewers? Well, the biggest thing that I've been, done in the last few years was to get back into to uh, church. And I, uh, I'm a member of the uh, uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church over on the north side. And uh, uh, my mission is to get out and encourage everybody to uh, believe in God. And we wouldn't be anywhere without the Lord. So that is the main thing I want to emphasize. That's, that's great advice. We appreciate uh you joining us. Thank you so much for all your contributions to make this a better place for all of us to live and raise our families. Thank you so much uh, to our viewers. Thanks for tuning in for this chat with the chair. Make sure that you share uh, this with your other friends, that you like us on Facebook, and that uh, you let everybody know that we're here. So till our next chat with the chair, I'm Joe Etling. Everybody have a great rest of your night. God bless. Okay. Thank you, sir. Great job. Great to get to chat with you. M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C -E Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch